Canada's National Bible Hour, brought to you under the auspices of Global Outreach Mission. We welcome you today as we share music and a message from God's precious word. James Blackwood, President, speaking. Dear friends, let me share a little concerning the broadcast. Canada's National Bible Hour had its origin in Calgary, Alberta in September 1925, broadcasting weekly Bible lectures. It is one of Canada's oldest, if not the oldest, religious broadcasts. Now in its 65th year, never missing a week, the message is presently heard on 70 stations across Canada and many more listeners in the northern parts of the United States. Recently, I came across a letter I received from Mr. Manning dated August 6, 1965. I want to read a portion of that letter and let me quote. I certainly appreciated the opportunity for a personal chat. There is a great and growing need to challenge the pastors and church workers of this country to face up to the tremendous responsibilities of the present hour and especially to recognize that the effectiveness of their efforts would be directly proportionate to their own personal surrender to the will of Christ and to the sweet influence of the Holy Spirit. End of quote. Now, 25 years later, those words are still necessary and relevant across our nation. We are committed to maintain this broadcast as a dynamic force in the spiritual life of this country. 
to accommodate this task, we sincerely seek your continued faithful prayer and financial support. This month, we have been offering a copy of the booklet addressing the 11th commandment. Is it our responsibility? Is it an option or a command? I am sure once you read this booklet, you will agree with me wholeheartedly that the body of Christ cannot afford to take this command lightly anymore. The future of our world depends too highly upon it. You have probably heard this command several times in your Christian walk, and yet many have never realized its full importance. You will want to receive a copy. It is available for the asking. Just simply write a request, a copy of the 11th commandment. And remember the new address, Canada's National Bible Hour, Box 1210, St. Catharines, Ontario, L2R7A7. This is the last time we will be offering the 11th Commandment booklet this month. Let me give you the address again. We would love to hear from you. It's Canada's National Bible Hour, Box 1210, St. Catharines, Ontario, L2R7A7. This is James Blackwood thanking you for your letters and faithfulness. We listen to another musical selection and then William Lang as he shares from his heart.
the storm. Teach us to serve only thee. Revelation of Jesus Christ. What a theme to give to a man like the Apostle John. He had walked as a disciple with Christ upon the earth, and he had been in exile there in the Isle of Patmos. Now the Spirit of God is going to take him by prophetic transport forward unto the Lord's day, as verse 10 of Revelation 1 tells us. John speaking, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Now, the Lord's day is a term in English. When you say Lord's day, the emphasis is on the adjective Lord. When you say the day of the Lord, it's the emphasis is on the noun day. But he said here, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Now, that is looking ahead from our time to when Jesus Christ will come back at his second coming and establish an earthly millennial reign for 1,000 years. Now, the events of human experience that are going to be John's portion by revelation in the whole book of 22 chapters is coming to him as things that have already transpired. Now, this is not the first time that we read about this kind of a transport. 
When you read back in Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, the prophet saying, but he was wounded for our transgressions, he's speaking there about Jesus Christ. If you ask in Hebrew, he said that's the Hebrew nation, wounded for transgressions. But you remember in the 8th chapter of Acts, the Ethiopian eunuch invited Philip up into the chariot and said, I don't understand what I'm reading here. Of whom speaketh the prophet thus? And he began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Now it was some six or seven hundred years ahead of Calvary when Isaiah was written. So by prophetic transport, Isaiah was lifted forward so that he could look back on the events. Now here, John is in a similar position. And he said, when I was in the spirit, I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Now this must have been something of a, a great event for John. When he saw Jesus Christ ascend to heaven from the Mount of Olives, he must have said, you know, how long will it be until I see him again? Well, it wasn't long until that query was satisfied because the angel came and said, this same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. And now here by revelation, John is seeing Jesus Christ. Now I want you to anticipate what God puts into the spirit and soul of this prophet. Oh, there are going to be some rugged experiences in, in the chapters ahead of, in Revelation. And it's going to take a man who really does know his God to be able to stand. But he let him get a glimpse of Jesus Christ. I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of those candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. He's dressed as a priest, a high priest. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. What a magnificent person. What a tremendous vision. The very first vision of a book filled with visions. And John said, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. He was overwhelmed with this vision of Jesus Christ. Now, Christ laid his right hand upon me, John records, saying unto me, fear not. Oh, that must have been the most gracious balm to his soul that day that he ever could hear. You see, when Christ says, fear not, there is always legitimate cause for us in the human realm to have those kind of expressed fears. But when he says, fear not, he has that necessary virtue and strength to infuse our lives with himself so that we rise above all that would hold us down in our spirit to this world. And what did he tell him? He said three things. I want to show you, John, from the very commencement of this revelation, how to conquer fear. Now, is that a necessary message for us in this world today? Surely, 
in the midst of all that goes on about us, imagined and real. We need to be able to know above everything else this supreme remedy for fear. And here is his word. It's always the word of God. Remember, this infallible book is always geared to our fallibility. And that infallible truth is able to undergird us so that we might not sin against him. And you don't need to be elderly before you come to these positions in life. The Bible said, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? And if this be an infallible record, and it is, then God Almighty is able to speak that word and it can give us the necessary virtue, strength, and power to be able to face life as a Christian ought. Now, what's the first thing that he said will allay our fears? I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth. First of all, be unafraid of life, John. Oh, you say, surely that isn't a difficulty. How many hundreds of thousands of people this year will commit suicide? They tell us that the greatest percentage of suicides are university students. And somehow they haven't found the strength to cope with the issues of life. And Jesus Christ comes along and says, Now, you don't need to be afraid of life. I am the first and the last. I was here before any of it began. And I'll be here when, if it's ever all concluded. I am he that liveth. He's not saying I was living. He said, I am living. How marvelous. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. In me ye might have life. And the scripture says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall know and find that way of light, unafraid to live. Now that's something that you can pick up and put in your heart today and tomorrow. Jesus Christ is alive. And the blessed Holy Spirit was sent to reveal that glorified Christ who today is seated at God's right hand, ever living to make intercession for us. Unafraid of life. Then the second thing is unafraid of death. I was dead, Christ said, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Then he says, Amen. He's saying, let all men agree that this is a positive truth. Be unafraid of death, because I have tasted it. I've gone to the lowest hell from Calvary's tree. I was down there bearing the sins of the whole world, and because I knew no sin, God was able to raise me from the dead, and he said, I am alive forevermore. He's not going to taste death again. Amen. Isn't that a marvelous truth? And you're related to Jesus Christ by his word and by his precious blood, and you're able to stand up and say, I'm unafraid of death. Oh, you say, now, are you being very real about that? Well, the process of death we might fear, because that's what causes us physical distress. But to know that the moment those pangs of death have done their work, we open our eyes to look upon the face of Jesus Christ and to be with him forevermore. Where are you going to be when you pass from this world, Christian? Oh, ask me in a hundred thousand years from now, I'm going to tell you the same thing. The Bible says, so shall we ever be with the Lord. But there's one thing more. 
He said, you don't have to be afraid, man, of eternity. I have the keys of hell and of death. Then of what need you be afraid? Unafraid of eternity. You see, someone took away all that is on the books of God against us for eternity. And how marvelous to be able to look into the face of Jesus Christ and say, my beloved is mine and I am his and it's never ever going to alter. Christ hath once suffered for our sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Isn't that a great drama that still waits to be unfolded? Oh, someday he's going to bring us to God. You put yourself into that verse and you say, he found me out here in this geographical position. I was wandering far from God and far from home and least of all with peace in my heart and fears in my breast. And Jesus Christ came along and offered to me a living covenant with himself through a divine relationship of life and love. And I yielded to his persuasion and I invited him to come into my heart. He said, Peter said, I'm looking forward to the day when Jesus Christ slips his arm through mine up there in the heavens and he's going to bring me over to the Father and he's going to say, Father, I found this one down there wandering and I came into his life by his invitation and now I want to present him to you. Oh, John was going to need to remember these things. He was going to see blood shed by the hundreds and thousands of mankind. But first of all, he was shown a vision of Jesus Christ and how wonderful. When these visions unfolded, I imagine John looked back to this where he saw Christ in the midst of these churches. And the church was golden to Jesus Christ. That's a precious thing. And he said, I, I'll be able to tell all mankind, don't be afraid of life. Be unafraid of death and welcome to eternity. Just as you are, come to the Savior, a new life begin. Oh, come just as you are. This heart-searching message is available in print or on cassette tape. The four messages this month on cassette for just $6.50.